Hi, I'm John from Our Home From Scratch, and in this video we're going to be talking about routers and router tables. Okay, so let's talk about the, the basic router first. So a router really is just a motor that has an output shaft that allows you to put on a router bit. And a router bit is just a piece of metal that's very sharp that has a certain profile on it, okay? And um, router bits are generally come in two different types of diameters and uh, they are router bits that have a half inch shaft and then router bits that have a quarter inch shaft. Alright, so most routers when you buy them will come with a collet which is a nut, okay, that locks into the top of the router bit or the router that accepts either half inch shafts or quarter inch shafts. All right, so this collet is removable and I can we'll put this one on here. So this particular bit is a windowsill cutting bit. It puts a windowsill profile on. And this is a half inch diameter router a bit and it's in a half inch collet. So if I wanted to go to a different router bit that took a quarter inch collet, I would then just use a couple wrenches and I would be able to back this, this collet off and replace it with one uh, a quarter inch for example. Most routers you purchase uh, on the market in a store will come with both collets. Okay, so a couple of other interesting things that are worth noting. Uh, the router has a on off switch and this particular model has a speed adjustment setting. This is a Bosch unit. I think I paid three, two or three hundred dollars for this particular unit and it came with a bunch of features uh, both collets came with the wrenches and also came with two bases and I'll go over those in a second. Um, it's a very nice high quality um, router. Uh, it's high powerful so it, it's, it's got some decent kick to it so it's two or three horsepower. Um, the higher the horsepower the heavier uh, router bits you'll be able to, to use in it like this is a big heavy router bit uh, this handles it no problem some of the, uh, the less expensive ones don't have a speed adjustment setting. Uh, they have fewer horsepower, so maybe a three-quarter or half or one horsepower. And so it, it may just get bogged down. Heavier, denser, denser woods like uh, oak may not last as long. So this is a nice, high-quality unit. Uh, I recommend this one on our tools page, and you can see the link for that on our, on our tool recommendation page. So let's talk real quick about some uh, blades, uh, some router bits rather. So this is a fairly medium sized diameter router bit. Um, this one is a small one uh, and I'm, I'm not talking about the half inch shaft, I'm talking about the actual cutting part. So the speed setting is nice for uh, accommodating the bit you're using. So this speed control goes from one to six uh, this bit, as, as they get bigger, you want to slow them down. So I would probably use maybe a 4 or 5 in, on this setting. And maybe for something like this router bit, I would use maybe a 5 or a 6. So this router bit, uh, which is a raised panel bit, and I can show you a picture of where we used uh, this raised panel bit in our dining room. Um, this I'd probably use a 2 or a 3 on it. Okay. So if you buy a router that doesn't have a speed control, then what you're going to want to do is, and you need the speed control for various bits, then you can put in some type of speed control device between the outlet and, and the power cord for this that lets you dial in the voltage going to the router. Okay, so that's the, the basics of the router uh, housing, the power, and how what router bits change outs. So um, this, all the bits for routers cut out a profile so here's a couple I have this is a like, like I said a windowsill bit so as you run the board across it through these teeth it puts this profile on it which would you would use on a route a, a windowsill this one I showed you earlier is a beading bit and this puts a small little bead on whatever workpiece you're cutting also has a little bearing on the end um, I have this guy, which is a groove bit. This is approximately three quarters of an inch or so. And what this does is, if you want to put grooves or dados in a piece of plywood for a cabinet building or something, uh, you could use this instead of a table saw. It's a nice little bit to have. 
this is a round over bit, so it's got a nice little curved edge to it. So if you wanted to, say, run that alongside a table, you could put a nice little round over on it. Um, this is a rabbiting bit. Um, so what this does is, if, again, maybe for cabinet building or, or making a picture frame, you could put a just notch a piece of wood with this. So this is a nice little rabbit bit to have. All right, so let's talk about the two different types of bases. So this is a plunge router base, and the router just basically sits in here, and you you'd probably do it this way. You would put the router in, turn it on, and you would push this switch and push down. And it allows you to plunge into a piece of work and then pull through. Okay, so one thing to note about when you're using a router base like this with a fixed base is you always want to pull in one direction. Okay, so when if we were to put a router edge on this table, I would put it here, push down, and then I would always pull from left to right. Okay, I'm never going to engage the workpiece and then slide from right to left. The blade always needs to cut in one direction from left to right. Consequently, when we put it in a, in a router table, the router is upside down, and we're going to do the opposite. We're going to go from right from left because that corresponds to that same direction. Okay, so why would you use a plunge versus a fixed? Well, a plunge, again, allows you to stop and start in the middle of a piece. So if you ever have a need to do that, um, you would want to use a, a plunge base. A plunge base router is probably a little more versatile. So how this works is this basically lines up in here. Okay, and then you can push this down, and then you have your your bit there. I can lock this in place, and then I can plunge this bit in and out. I wouldn't use a plunge bit for a windowsill bit, but um, you get the idea. So this is how this works, and then I can then, uh, the nice thing about plunging bits is you could actually set the depth with this, a depth gauge right here. And if you only want the thing to go, the bit to go in, say an inch, you could you could adjust this, and as you push down on it, it comes to a dead stop at a certain depth point. So that's nice. The other thing we have here is the fixed base. Okay, so the fixed base um, I use on my router table, but the fixed base uh, you can't do plunge cuts. So because you, you, there's no way it, it's just fixed essentially. It allows you to hold the router very still. So what you would do for this is edge cuts. Okay, so if I wanted to put a nice bead or edge on this work table I just built, I could put this here and engage the piece and then pull it from left to right. Okay, so fixed bases are more common. They come uh, as standard with most of the uh, less expensive models. There are multiple jigs that attach to these if you want to say cut a circle or if you want to um, just have, so this is kind of, if you're doing a profile on this edge here, it can be kind of difficult to make sure this stays flat, so they have extensions for this that allow you to keep it steady and hold it as you pull it through. So uh, those are the two basic types of uh, router bases. So uh, I think next up we'll show a quick demonstration of how to use the fixed base to put a, a nice um, edge on a piece of scrap wood. Okay, uh, the important thing to note uh, about working with any type of wood with routers is that the router uh, will follow the profile of whatever piece of wood you have. Okay, so this is a piece of scrap poplar I have, and this edge is pretty square and pretty true. But if, if there were any imperfections or divots or um, the table saw left some marks, uh, when you run, say, this this router bit against it, actually more, more like that in the middle, it's going to want to follow the contours because it's going to be running on the bearing. So if, if there's any divots, the bearing is going to follow the divots, it's going to follow the imperfections, and it, it'll show up in your finished work piece. So you want whatever piece you're working with to be as close to square and perfect as possible. Um, a lot of times we see in, in, uh, in homes or in some projects, is especially with window sills, is uh, the carpenters will just take a, a, a piece of board, they'll rip it with their table saw, and they won't clean up the edge, and then it looks the windowsill right from the right from the get-go gets has a beat-up look to it. So you can avoid that by having a nice square piece of wood. Um, 
how to get a square piece of wood is a different story, and we can go in that in another video. Uh, we can do that with a planer or a joiner, but um, so that's important to note. So, uh, so let's show how to use the fixed base router to cut a nice piece. All right, before we get started using power tools, it's important to use both the eye protection and hearing protection as well. These routers are very loud. Uh, also, to be sure to follow whatever manufacturer safety instructions come with your router. All right, so for this little demonstration of the fixed base router, I have a scrap piece of poplar here. I've screwed it down to my work surface to simulate a stationary piece of wood. So um, this could be a table edge, it could be a, just a regular piece of wood, um, but we want it to be nice and sturdy and, and not moving when we use the fixed base router. If uh, you can't use a fixed base router or if it's not comfortable, then you could try routing it on the router table. So what I'm going to do is I have my round over bit here, I have it set to the right depth, or the, at least the depth I think it should be set to, and I'm going to stand it on edge. I'm going to turn it on, push it in, and then pull it across from left to right. Okay, let's see how this goes. Am I hearing protection? Alright, so you could see by looking at it, put it actually a really nice profile on there. Uh, I started it a little too late, so um, you could, it's actually kind of really hard to start the edges right there. Uh, and also I put a little bit of line right there, so I could then go back and adjust the depth of the router bit to, to clean this edge up. Unless you wanted some type of sharp transition, uh, that would be fine as well. So that was really just the basics of using a fixed base router to uh, get a nice profile on there. So next up we'll take a look at the router table. Okay, so this is my basic router table. It consists of some melamine for the work surface as well as some plywood for the structure. So the reason I built this instead of buying it, number one it was cheaper to do and then I could get exactly the type of uh, work surface dimensionally I, I wanted so I could make it as big or as small as I wanted. Um, and actually it's, it's been pretty useful so far. I've, I've used it for a number of projects. So let me show you the basic features. It's got a uh, melamine work surface. So this is the same stuff you can get in shelving at your local uh, home center. It's three quarter inches thick. It's a particle board. And that sits and is glued to a half inch thick piece of regular plywood. All right, there's a couple of these aluminum T-tracks, which are right here. Now these T-tracks are great for accessory tools like uh, feather boards or the miter gauge, say, from your table saw. Um, the fence is also three-quarter inch thick uh, melamine, and I'll show you that in a second. The uh, center section is where the router uh, actually attaches to. In a lot of router tables, this piece will be a hard, thin, heavy piece of plastic, and um, it'll be expensive. And actually, sometimes they have tools in it to lift and lower the, the router. This is a very simple way of doing this. It's just a piece of melamine with the router base attached to it, just literally screwed right into it. Okay, and then I have a hole cut to match the size, roughly a little bigger than this windowsill bit I have here. And um, what I can do is this piece can just remove, pull in and pull out. I can put a different one on here if I want to. So for example, if I want to cut a raised panel, I can, and I'm using this raised panel bit, I would just use a bigger one of these or another block with a, with a larger hole cut into it. So you can just have a bunch of scraps laying around and, and use that. So that worked fine with this. So let me show you the back. So the back, you can see the back side of the fence, pocket screws to keep the fence assembled. It's got these T-tracks again so I can move this fence back and forward uh, to adjust for the router bit. It's got a little dust collection box here and I got this again at my home center as well. 
So this, uh, my shop vac can plug right into this guy here. And when you're cutting uh, or you're using the router table, you really want to use some type of uh, dust removal system uh, because what happens is this, these router bits tend to remove a lot of material and you really need to get it out of the area. So what happens is if you don't, it just builds up in this area and it could affect your cut, uh, the quality goes down. So by removing it right away, you just get a much better result. So that's, I recommend adding one of those. And by the way, the plans for this table are free and they're on our site and you can get them from our home from scratch slash uh, router table. So let me lift this up for you and you can see the base. Okay, so I made this removable for the exact same reason so I can get in here and pop this router out in and out easily. Uh, this is the fixed base router, uh, the, the, the router base. Uh, the top just has this plywood skirt around it so it'll fit right over this plywood base. So, uh, see, see if I can do this. It's kind of tricky. Alright. So the base is really just uh, some plywood assembled with some pocket screws. The, there's an added safety switch here, which is a paddle switch. You can get those on Amazon.com and I have a, a link to the, the part product if you're looking for that. And what, what happens is the router of this cable just plugs right into that and then that goes to your power box or your switch or your outlet. So when I want to run the router, I have the router switched on and I actually can just control it right from here rather than having to reach under the table every time I want to run the router. So that makes it just much easier, much safer to deal with. I also have the table on some casters which I can lock so I can move it around the shop very easy even though it is pretty light and if you wanted to make it without casters you certainly could uh, if you wanted something that moves less because uh, you don't want the table to move a lot when you're cutting it. There's a blade spinning in here, so for obvious reasons you want it to be pretty steady. So that's the table. Uh, so let me show you how I cut with it. I'm going to make a basic uh, windowsill edge uh, using this windowsill router bit. Alright, so let's check that out. Okay, thanks for watching uh, this video on routers and router tables. If you think I missed uh, anything important or critical, or if you have any questions, you can leave a comment below in the YouTube channel or in the blog post that goes along with this video. Uh, this video is the first in a series we're doing where we're um, covering some basic woodworking tools. In my workshop next, we'll be filming a video on uh, table saws, how to set them up, and how to use them. Um, we're building up to making some built-ins for our home office, so we're getting all the tools ready for that. And we're going to be doing a couple episodes on building uh, those built-in cabinets. Um, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, you can subscribe. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And um, on our blog, we have a newsletter. And if you subscribe to the newsletter, you get free access to our, all our woodworking plans, including the, the router table uh, you saw in this video. So um, thanks for watching.